Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is day 29 and day 30 of my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. I know you're saying to yourself, Rockula? Day 29 and day 30? Well, if anybody had paid attention, which nobody did, I actually put 29 bands on the 30 Bands in 30 Days list and didn't realize it until I was about halfway through, so... What I did was I had this Zappa file episode that I was having a whole bunch of problems with the music getting cleared. So I finally got it cleared. I'm going to put it out as a two part series because it is more than 15 minutes long. So this will be day 29 and day 30 of Veda 30 bands in 30 days. And it will be parts one and two of my Zappa file review of we're only in it for the money. Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is episode three of the Zappa File, and it is going to be a review of the album We're Only In It For The Money from Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. Out of sight, yeah. Listen, uh, are, you, are, you, are you hung up? Tomorrow, I need mean, to do it. Is all the Frank Zappa masters? That's what they are now. Blank. Empty. Space. So before I get into this, I'd like to mention that episode two of the Zappa file is called The Shoe Box. And a little backstory, I was given a shoe box full of Zappa tapes and it showed me how huge and all-encompassing Zappa's collection can be. And when I went through these tapes, it was both incredibly cool because I understood half of it, and then it was incredibly mystifying because I couldn't understand the other half. But I finally got through all of the tapes, and I finally settled on three of them. One of them was called Various Opaque Melodies, which was a mixtape of everything from the beginning to the current state of Zappa's career. And then the next tape was absolutely free. And the reason that I gravitated towards that was because a lot of those songs were on the Dr. Demento show. And if you want to see a review of absolutely free, I did a kind of a mini review where it is on the very first episode of the Zappa file, which is called the Zappa starter kit, and you can watch that here. So that being said, we're going to go with the third album in the Mothers of Invention lineup, and it's actually the fourth album from Frank Zappa because in between Absolutely Free and We're Only In It For The Money, he produced an album called Lumpy Gravy. So We're Only In It For The Money employs pretty much the same style as absolutely free with the various comedy bits and fragments of noise and recordings and songs and satire and comedy and all that other stuff. It just seems like this is a lot more well executed. It has got a more tight focus to it. And the social commentary is a lot more, how shall we say like, it's more heavy. As the years went by, I would later find out that Zappa was influenced by a form of music called Musique Concrète, which is a French experimental style started by Pierre Schaeffer and also practiced by uh, Stockhausen. So those two types of influences caused Zappa to do all those little parts that I didn't understand that were the in-between parts, the sped up and slowed down pieces of tape manipulation, effects, noises, and slices of orchestral pieces. But you know what? I think uh, I'm going to try to probably do a music concrete episode later on for the Zappa file. Well, let's open up the album with one of those music concrete pieces called Are You Hung Up? And I actually used that in the opening title sequences at the beginning of the episode. So, you know, 
One of the things that I realized about this kind of style is that it's kind of non sequitur. And up until that point, my only real influence of non sequitur type art was Monty Python. And this kind of reminded me of an audio version of a Monty Python album, but it was way more abrasive. But not so abrasive in this opening track that I couldn't handle it because it was short enough and there was enough interesting stuff to keep me interested. I know that's redundant, but so after that, we get into a song, the first song, I guess you could call it the first real song, and it is Who Needs the Peace Corps? I'm completely stoned, I'm hippy and I'm trippy, I'm a gypsy on my own. I'll stay a week and get the crabs and take a bus back home. I'm really just a phony, but forgive me cause I'm stoned. Chamber of Commerce, how to get the hate street, and smoke an awful lot of dope. I will wander around barefoot. I will have a psychedelic gleam in my eye at all times. I will love everyone. I will love the police as they pick the shit out of me on the street. This song is the exact opposite of the very first Zappa song that I ever heard on the Dr. Demento show, which was Hungry Freak's Daddy. Now, just like Hungry Freak's Daddy, a vast majority of social satire in the 60s was aimed at the establishment and older people and old people regressive mindsets but unlike hungry freaks daddy this song was actually criticizing hippies and i think that now that i look back it's the very first song that i ever heard coming from the 60s that actually criticized hippies well it doesn't take very long from them to turn their attention from hippies to the establishment and the older generation with concentration moon mom and dad Telephone Conversation and Bowtie Daddy. American Way, threatened by us. Drag a few creeps away in a bus. American Way, prisoner lock. Smash every creep in the face with a rock. Cop, kill a creep. Pow, pow, pow. The social commentary keeps going with Harry, you're a beast and criticizes both feminism and the empty females of their generation. And then the song turns into a statement about rape. And here's some, a little backstory on this album. When the record company heard this next part that I'm going to play, they altered it because evidently it's supposedly saying, don't come in me but it's not like they made it go backwards. It's like they chopped it into pieces and made the different pieces go backwards and forwards. So I tried to decipher it, but you know, I just didn't want to get into infinite details, but basically they got censored and this is what it sounds like. You paint your head, your mind is dead. You don't even know what I just said. That's you. your body. Harry, get back. Madge, it's not merely physical. Harry, you're a beast. Don't come on in there and meet me. I'm in my DNA. Ha, 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 ha. Madge, 
badge, I couldn't help it. I dog on it. Next, Zappa asks the musical question, what's the ugliest part of your body? And once again, we find out it's your mind. This criticism is aimed again at the older generation. All your children are poor, unfortunate victims of lies you believe. A plague upon your ignorance that keeps the young from the truth they deserve. 